Good afternoon, everybody. A couple of announcements for those here and those joining us online as well. For those members of the select vestry, please note that we now have a date for the postponed vestry, which was postponed due to unforeseen circumstances, and it's now being confirmed as the 18th of July. That's Monday the 18th of July at the normal time of 7.45. As part of our time together and gathering in the Lord's name to give him praise, we'll be having a Psalms of Praise service in Kiltive Oak Church on the 24th of July at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and that's for in-person only, I'm afraid. So you need to come along and sing out your heart to the Lord. Uh, our new wine conference is returning to in-person, and that's um, the first half is 9th to the 12th, and the second is the 14th to the 17th, and it's the second part of the week B that myself and some others are going to. This morning's service is Holy Communion, and so we begin as we gather together in the Lord's name, we begin with the greeting. Grace, mercy, and peace in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Today we're looking at what it means to have a harvest of righteousness, and here is a proverb from Proverbs about that very topic. Whoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. From Proverbs 21, 21. And we have there a Paul's letter to the Church in Romans, and we'll be coming back to that passage later in the service. But as always, we, at a communion service, we put ourselves right with God, and we begin by saying together the Catholic to Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. So as we do each Sunday, the beginning of the week, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. And in silent prayer, we confess before God. Let us return to the Lord our God, and we say to him, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to sing our first hymn, Come, ye thankful people, come.
The prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, you've broken the tyranny of sin and sent the Holy Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading from the Book of Kings. Thank you. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of the raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Nanam, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God? to give death or life, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy. Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard the king of Israel had tore his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Nainam came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be cleaned. But Nainam became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me that he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more? when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn now to our psalm for today, which we read together. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me. You up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead, and restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name, for his wrath endures with the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord of your goodness, have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face to me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord, I made my supplication. What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. 
O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing, and you have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Amen. We come now to our gradual hymn before our gospel reading. And it's great is the Lord most worthy to be praised. Please stand. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Luke, beginning at chapter 10, verse 1. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them out on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of this town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in a protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. We continue at verse 16. Whoever listens to you and listens to me, and whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to thread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, 
but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Glory Pray to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> I pray, Lord, now as we come to your word, you would help us to hear your voice, and in hearing your voice, to respond to your word, to your way, and to your will. <coughs> and in so doing, we might in turn call out in your name. Amen. Well, the theme for this service, as it is each Sunday by Sunday, it is based on the readings. And no, I haven't completely forgotten the calendar of the year, and suddenly thought we were in autumn. I very deliberately chose a harvest hymn to begin with. We will in a few months' time give thanks for the, the harvest, usually here at silage, cattle and sheep, but whatever the harvest may be, we'll give thanks for it gathered in. But the other thing that we perhaps fail to give thanks, or maybe we fail to remember, is a harvest of righteousness. And while God knows we need physical needs, he's actually more concerned by our eternal soul and our rightness with him. Hence why the theme of today's service is the harvest of righteousness. And you have there again the verse from Proverbs. At the beginning of our reading from the Gospel, we have Luke's Gospel, we have there the words of Jesus to the 70 or 72. The reason is either 70 or 72, that in the original Greek, they count using letters. So A would be one, B would be two, and so forth. Except they count using Greek letters, so it would be alpha, beta, and so on. <coughs> but it doesn't particularly matter whether it was actually 70 or 72. The fact that he sent out some to preach, to tell the good news, to bring healing and to bring the kingdom of God. And here's the same passage again, but for the Amplified Version. The harvest is abundant, for there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation. But the workers, those available to proclaim the message of salvation, are few. Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go on your way. In these days, and as it was actually in the time of Jesus, there are a few who share and tell the good news of Jesus. I do my best, but I'm not the only one. We have parish readers, we have others, and in other churches to share the good news. And the good news is, of course, that Jesus Christ came to earth and went to the cross for you and for me. And we will gather around his table with the cross at the central place later in this service. And Jesus came to reconcile us to himself and to his Father and to each other. Peace. And that is why Jesus went on to say, whatever house you enter first, say peace. That is the blessing of well-being and prosperity, the favour of God to this house. And if anyone of peace is there, someone who is sweet-spirited and hospitable, your blessing of peace will rest on him and her, but if not, will return to you. Indeed, the actual bit of reading, if you look at our reading, you'll notice there's a piece missing. Now, I decided to go with the, exactly the lectionary readings, but I don't like it when they leave out a little bit. I don't like when we take out a little bit of the Bible. And the little bit they took out was about the towns of Chorazin, Bethsaida. And they didn't receive the peace of the 72 or 70. And the disciples were told to shake off the dust of their feet, as you will, as a judgment, as a turning away. Jesus said that if the same blessing had been a peace had been granted to Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have responded, yet those particular times mentioned didn't. So Jesus is challenging us and it builds on what we reflected last week. Do we receive the peace he's given us or do we turn away from it? And I just want to draw our attention to the letter of the church, to the church in Rome, but it could be written to the church today. This again is about the harvest of righteousness. For the hour is already there for your awakening of your sleep, of spiritual complacency. 
Your salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed in Christ. Jesus has come to us, do we recognize and accept him? So let us fling away the works of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves, conduct ourselves properly and honorably in the light of day. You see me wear these robes whenever it's a sacramental service on most Sundays. Do you ever ask yourself why it's black and white white? Black is us living in darkness without God, and white is us closed in purity and in white. It's a reminder for us all, not just for me who happens to wear them. So go clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, forever thinking about gratifying the flesh in regard to its proper desires. The very first followers of Jesus were in his discipline, they followed called followers of the way, and were called to follow in the ways of Christ. That's why also in the letter of the church in Rome, the church in Hebrews, I'm sorry, the letter of the Hebrews, I should say, there's this no disciple seen, discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. So, first the 70, 72 had to know the ways of Jesus and share them, and they called others into the way of Christ, as we too are called into the ways of discipline of Christ. And last week we reflected on saying yes to Jesus, receiving the Holy Spirit and growing in gifts of the Spirit. I think it's good for us to remind ourselves again of the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit, of love, of joy, of patience, peace, gentleness, self-control, and faithfulness. May we be rooted in God's Word as we are in this moment now, but may it be watered by prayer as we will do later in the service. I know many in the church already have Bible notes, and I presume at the same time or around that time you'd also pray each day. Can I encourage you, if you haven't already, to take some notes? Let myself know or Elsie and others. So we have notes. There are many different types. But we don't all pray in the same way. But I pray that we would have a harvest of righteousness. Because Jesus has come and will return. And he will say, do I know you? And can we answer yes or no? I draw towards a close with a little illustration. Now I'm not going to ask you which illustration works for you, but I have one for different demographics, shall we say. Are you familiar with the older radios where you had that dial and you turned the dial and the needle went either around or up or down the screen and it tuned into the channel? I think sometimes we need to turn that dial to tune in. Because sometimes the signal has got a bit crackly and rustly, and we're not hearing God so well. Or perhaps if we are younger demographic, those of us who are joining us online, and that's why I'm still keen that we're going out online, because the message is going wide and far. You might be one of those people who is familiar with the internet and the Wi-Fi, but you can't access the Wi-Fi unless you have the password, and you've accepted and clicked on the link. Well, the password, if you will, is yes to Jesus, and you accept him, and then you're connected in with God and to heaven. Whichever is a better illustration for you, may it speak to you and challenge you and me. So as we reflect on the nature of what happened to the 72, before we come to a quick conclusion, notice the great mighty warrior. He thought he was somebody mighty and he was not impressed when the prophet said, go down to the river and wash yourself seven times. He didn't even come out to see me. But thankfully he had very wise servants and they said to him, look, if the prophet had told you to do something complicated, you would have done it. But is that not true for a lot of us? Sometimes we expect God to ask us a difficult thing. He asks us a simple question, do we say yes? And sometimes we're looking for a lot of other things in the way. We just need to say yes. And eventually that warrior went down, washed, and was healed. So may we not be like the warrior at first, but be willing to take that challenging but simple question. 
At the end of this passage in Luke, they return and they've said that they've seen the demons flee and they've seen mighty things happen. And Jesus says to them, look, I've seen even more mighty things than that. I've seen the Satan fall down from heaven like lightning. But I don't rejoice in that. I rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. So let us not necessarily look for signs or wonders. Let us look to God and in faith receive him and give hope that our names are written in heaven so that when we say the creed and we respond that God is God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, there's resurrection, there's hope, of eternal life, it wouldn't just be something that we think of, it would be something that we accept for ourselves. In Jesus' name, may that be true. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. With joy and gratitude for the gift of Jesus, let us draw near to our Heavenly Father in prayer, asking his mercy for the church, the world, and all who need his loving kindness. Everlasting God, strengthen your church that we may become members united in prayer and in practical help and support for one another. Lord, draw your church together into one great company of disciples, together serving your Son in his mission to the world. We pray for courage, wisdom, and guidance to stand up for our faith when it is challenged. Lord, give us a spirit of gentleness that through our witness, those who have strayed are encouraged to return to your forgiving and saving love. May we be more accepting of one another as brothers and sisters, finding strength and joy in our life together as me fellow members of the body of Christ. Today, we pray in particular for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. We pray especially for Reverend Adam's friend, Canon Fanwell, and his family serving in the Diocese of Central Tanganyika as they continue to witness God's love to the people there. Faithful Father, we pray for Bishop Andrew and for the clergy and those in our own diocese who teach us the faith and point us in the ways of your kingdom. Today we pray especially for the congregations of the parishes of Edenderry and Clannabogan and their rector, Reverend Canon Robert Clark. Lord, guide him and all your ordained servants in their ministry, and may they live each day determined to spread the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for Reverend Adam as he continues to faithfully teach and enable us to understand the true identity of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit empower him to preach your word with authority and power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, came into this world from heaven to live the perfect life and to conquer death on the cross. Only by faith and belief in him are we able to obtain a right relationship with you. As we pre prepare to receive Holy Communion, we ask that you will reveal yourself to us in a new way, remove and cleanse us from any sin which may hinder our journey in pursuit of righteousness. Through your Holy Spirit, enable us to draw nearer to you, to seek you with all our hearts, and keep us from straying from your commandments. Strengthen us through prayer, reading, and study of your word, so that we may become spiritually mature and more like Christ and his righteousness in every aspect of our lives. May we live today in a way that brings honor to your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray that we might learn to care for our planet as your gift before it's too late. We pray for scientists and all those who work tirelessly to combat climate change and for all who teach us how to look after the environment. Inspire each of us to do what we can, no matter how small or, un or insignificant our efforts may seem, for the sake of generations yet to come. God of peace, in this time of international strife, 
We pray for a war, a world where war and unrest are in so many countries. We ask that you would eradicate hatred and prejudice from the minds of all peoples. Change the hearts of leaders bent on destruction or conquest. Give wisdom to all who seek justice through negotiation to bring about reconciliation and the cessation of violence. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for all who have lost loved ones, those who have been forced to leave their homes, and the people who continue to live in fear of the atrocities of this unjust war. We pray, Lord, that you would turn the hearts of President Putin and his advisors away from the ways of oppression and away from their apparent influence and indifference to human suffering. We ask you to give strength and courage to the leaders of NATO, the EU, and America, along with the other nations and indirectly involved, so that they will work tirelessly to find a peaceful end to the cruel war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving Lord, we thank you for the gift of family and friends. Lord, bless our homes and those of our families and neighbours with the joy of your presence. May our hearts be ever open to you and to the needs of our fellow human beings. We pray for families in our community and around the world in these uncertain times. We especially pray for families in need, those struggling with the economic upheaval <clears throat> excuse me, and the high cost of living, those neglected or cruelly treated, those who live in fear or face some kind of discrimination or are exploited. Lord, surround these families with your love. May they feel supported by their neighbours and cared for by their community. Lord, speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit and enable us to be generous with all you have given to us and be Come, people committed to caring and caring for and blessing others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, thank you for the many times you have restored and given strength to those who are sick. Thank you for the times we have seen those with life threatening diseases made whole and strengthened by your goodness and grace. Comfort the sick and suffering with your loving presence. Calm, confused, and anxious minds, and reassure the lonely with your company. We bring to you in prayer those who are most in need in our families and community, the elderly, the housebound, and those in nursing homes, in hospital and hospices, and those undergoing different forms of treatment. Thank you for the doctors, nurses, surgeons, and medics you use to bring healing to the sick for medications, vaccinations, and healing therapies that can bring restoration to a sick body or diseased mind. We praise and thank you for your loving kindness and long suffering towards us and all your children. We take a moment of silent prayer to bring before God those known to us who are unwell at present in our families or in the wider community. And in our prayers this week, can I ask you please to hold before God Georgina Pollock, George Pearson, and all who are housebound due to frailty of years or chronic pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of eternity, through the death on the cross and glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you freely grant, grant forgiveness and salvation to every sinner who dies trusting in your promises to free us from the power and grip of death. We give you thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ, especially those known to us who were dear to us and whom we sorely miss. We pray for those in mourning. Lord, in times of sorrow, Give us faith to trust your word, confidence to believe in your promises that you are with us in times of distress and sadness. We pray for families known to us in our community who have lost a loved one. Help us to support them and all those who born in prayer, helping them face the difficult days and weeks to come. Thank you, Lord, 
that no matter what difficulty, pain, or sorrow we may go through in our earthly lives, in your eternal kingdom, weeping will be replaced with laughter and pain with joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we sum up our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, where the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we do, we are reconciled to God and to one another as we approach his table. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your sins. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Bear with me a moment while I complete the preparation of the table. Christ, our past has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us celebrate, celebrate the, the feast. feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father Almighty and ever living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, all the company for heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. And even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us, but in your love and your mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man, and to suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night he betrayed, he took bread. When he gave him thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
the same way after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave given thanks to you, he gave to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We be many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he given for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to live and work your praise and glory. Amen. Please stand for our final hymn. For those who need it, the hymn number is Six Angel. Please stand.
Through Christ Jesus our Lord, according to his promise, the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us, making us your children, and giving us power to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. And the Spirit of truth leads you in all truth, and give you grace to confess that Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the word and the works of God. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We go, may we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, our amen. A reminder that the no End Vision magazine are on the table at the back of the church if you need to nip back in and pick them up. God bless, keep well and keep safe.